talk about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And oh! Welcome back to the Scores Sports Podcast. I'm the host of this podcast, Lane Frank. We're now episode 121. Yes, we're 121 episodes through. This is our mock draft special. Info draft is today. Here's my final 32 pick mock draft, mock draft special. If you want to see NBA content, MLB content, hop off this episode. This is the mock draft special. NFL draft fans, NFL fans, this episode's for you. Let's do it. One of my favorite episodes of the year. Third straight, third annual, Squared Sports NFL mock draft special. Let's hop into it. Now, the mock draft there, buddy. Let me break down the rules for this mock draft. This is a mock draft. I am not going to get every single pick all right. Obviously, I'd like to, but I'm not going to get every single pick right because that's impossible. Not even the best guys in the business would ever even come close to getting every pick right. I mean, if you get 15 Above, that's legendary in my book, and that's almost impossible. Last year, we got 7 out of 32 picks right. I said it's a pretty good mock draft. This year, let's shoot for better. This year, let's shoot for that 32 out of 32 if it can happen. It'll be a great draft. This draft has a lot more differences in the past two years we've done this mock draft because last year, you kind of knew the number one pick was going to be Trayvon Walker. Year before that, you knew the number one pick was going to be Trevor Lawrence, and then you knew number two would be Zach Wilson, number three would be Trey Lance. It's all jumbled up this year. You can see some guys having Bryce Young going number one to the Panthers. You can see some guys having CJ Stroud, Andy Richardson, Will Levis. It's all mixed up this year. So that's why I'm excited the most for this year's NFL mock draft. So without further ado, let's hop into the full 32-pick NFL mock draft. Let's hop into it. With the first pick in the 2023 Squared Sports NFL Mock Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young, quarterback out of Alabama. He's not the best quarterback prospect we've ever seen. I don't think he's the best quarterback prospect any of us have ever seen. But he's still the best quarterback prospect in this year's NFL Draft. Bryce Young did what he needed to do in college football. Sad a year in 2020 behind Mac Jones. Did what he needed to do in 2021. Got to the national championship. Did what he needed to do this season. With his play, bowl game, that was a great bowl game. And then the postseason process, obviously, with the combine, the interviews, scouts, all that. I think he performed pretty well. Bryce Young has deserved himself number one spot this year's NFL draft. So, number one, Bryce Young going to the Carolina Panthers, Alabama Crimson the Tide, get their quarterback to go number one overall. When was the last time you saw Alabama quarterback go number one overall? I don't think it's ever happened. Maybe Joe Namath? Bryce Young, number one overall, the Carolina Panthers. Number two, the Houston Texans are on the clock. Now, they have an interesting quarterback situation. They have Davis Mills, they have Jeff Driscoll, or do they keep on those guys, or do they go after a guy like CJ Stroud, Andy Richardson? They want a defensive guy, you got a defensive head coach, Miko Ryans. Let's see what they do right here. So, in my mock draft, I have the Houston Texans selecting Will Anderson Jr., defensive end out of Alabama. Who? Go Crimson Tide. First two picks, go over to the Crimson Tide. Will Anderson Jr. might be the best overall prospect in this draft. If I had to bet on one guy, in this draft class to make the Hall of Fame, I'll put all my chips into the bag. Will Anderson Jr., you know, productivity dropped off a little bit this season, 2022, but 2021, great season. Seven sacks his freshman year in 2020. Will Anderson Jr., surefire selection. Houston Texans, that's what you need right now. You want to find the next J.J. Watt? That's what Will Anderson for you right there. That's what J.J. Watt was for you for years. I think you go with that. Here, right here. Maybe they go after a quarterback later in my mock draft. They still do have pick 12. Let's see on that. But they don't take quarterback number two. They take Will Anderson Jr. That's a great pick for you, in my opinion. I like Will Anderson Jr. Alabama Crimson Tide. Go number two. Number three, Arizona Cardinals. Now, I thought about doing a little bit of a trade down right here for the Arizona Cardinals, but a top three pick has a lot of value. I don't know if you're going to get that value on draft night because it's a high-pressure situation. Usually, these top three draft picks trades happen months before, say, Dolphins and 49ers trade, say, Panthers and Bears trade. These trades happen months in advance where you get first-round picks involved. I don't know if you get that in this trade right here, Arizona Cardinals. So I say, you hold on to that pick. You have defensive new head coach, Jonathan Gannon. You're losing Buda Baker, so you're going to need another defensive superstar out of that J.J. Watt era, like the Houston Texans. I think you take Tyree Wilson edge at Texas Tech. Second best edge in this draft class. Really good defensive draft class, in my opinion. I mean, you got Miles Murphy at Clemson. You obviously got Will Anderson Jr. And you got Tyree Wilson. Tyree Wilson at Texas Tech. Really the Trayvon Walker. This is draft class. Not so much productivity, not so many stats in college, but the freak athlete, all that's right there. Tyree Wilson, number three, the Arizona Cardinals. 
Number four, the Indianapolis Colts are on the clock. We've only had one quarterback go off the board, and that's where I saw I'm going to have another one going off right here. The quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts selecting is CJ Stroud, quarterback at Ohio State. Now, you can say what you want. The condition test, horrible. Yeah, I agree with that. That's pretty bad. Oh, he played with a stacked wide receiver quarter Ohio State. Can't do that in NFL. I don't know. But you can't deny what you, what you see right there. He can improvise like crazy. He can throw like crazy. And he can throw hyper accurate. I think you got to take CJ Stroud right here. Number four, Indianapolis Colts. Just go best quarterback available. You want to take a risk on Will Levis. You want to take a risk on Anthony Richardson. Those guys couldn't even combine for 300 yards in the game against each other. So... I like CJ Stroud in this one right here. Indianapolis Colts, so like CJ Stroud, showed so much in the field. That's what you look for right here in a quarterback, in my opinion. I'm not looking so much at what Will Levis can do in a pro day or what Andy Richardson can do in the combine. I'm looking for what CJ Stroud can do on a field, what Bryce Young can do on a field. That's why these two quarterbacks are going first in my draft. Number four, Indianapolis Colts, so like CJ Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State. Five. We got another defense player going off the board. Seattle Seahawks not taking quarterback. Some people may have them reaching for, say, a Hene Hooker. I have the Seattle Seahawks taking Jalen Carter, defensive lineman at Georgia. Now, Jalen Carter started this draft process really high, had a great college football season. We all can deny that. He had some off games. We also had some great games in there. Forced a lot of fumbles. Pete Carroll loves the defensive lineman. And then he had some bad things go on after the combine or even before the combine with the arrest warrant. He's kind of overcome all that right now. Jalen Carter overcomes all that, becomes a top five pick, gets his money. Jalen Carter, defensive lineman out of Georgia, goes over to the Seattle Seahawks. Pete Carroll, it's a great pick for right there. Do they trade this pick? Do they hold on to it? I have them trading this pick over to the Houston Texans. Now, you just said Houston Texans just picked. Why are you trading them again? Houston Texans have pick 12 in this draft. I don't think they want pick 12. I think they want a quarterback. I think they want to Will Anderson Jr. You're not going to get Will Anderson Jr. past pick two because Arizona's going to snag him. You can get a quarterback past pick two, in my opinion. So you take Will Anderson Jr. and then you get that number six overall pick from Detroit Lions. You trade them number 12 overall pick, maybe next year's first round pick, or maybe a second round pick. For that number six overall pick. So we got six or 12 stop right here. Lions go down to number 12. I got the Texans going up to number six where they will select a quarterback. I think the perfect fit for them right here. I know a lot of you like to say Will Levis, maybe Henny Hooker, Andy Richardson, without a doubt. Freak athlete. I know I kind of hate him a little bit saying I don't care what he does in a pro day or a combine. It still matters though. He can throw a ball 80 yards in a dome where he's going to play in Houston. That's amazing right there. That's what I'm looking for at a quarterback. Andy Richardson goes over to the Texans. Maybe gets a year on the bench, a year or two on the bench, sits behind Davis Mills. And if Davis Mills struggles, you can plug in Andy Richardson there, say week seven, week eight, week nine. That's good for you right there. And then you also get that legendary edge rusher, Will Anderson, for years to come. So that's a good draft cost right there. Those are the two picks I have the Houston Texans taking. This is NFL draft. That's solid right there. You get your franchise quarterback, you get your franchise centerpiece on the defensive line. I like that right there. Houston Texans trade up at the lines. They snag. Third quarterback in this draft in Anthony Richardson, quarterback at Florida. Now, number seven, Las Vegas Raiders are on the clock. Raiders, kind of a tough spot here because, oh, I wanted CJ Stroud. Oh, I wanted Tyree Wilson. I don't know who to take now because Miles Murphy has been falling down draft boards. Nolan Smith, that's probably a little too early for him. So I think you trade this pick right here. Who do you trade it with? You trade it with the Detroit Lions, who now have picked 12 from that Houston Texans trade. So the Lions go from 6 to 12, and now 12 back to 7. This is good for you right here, because Detroit Lions, they want a cornerback. And I think that quarterback that they wanted at pick 6 was Devon Witherspoon. If you could say, hey, if we can get Devon Witherspoon one pick later and get a first round or a second round pick out of it, that's great for you right there. I like Detroit Lions taking Devon Witherspoon, cornerback out of Illinois. This is just a great pick right here. Best defensive back in this year's NFL draft class. Detroit Lions snagged Devon Witherspoon. Fits in that damn Campbell system. They're just building up this defense by year. Malcolm Rodriguez. It touches it. And now you got Devon Witherspoon to plug in and play there. So Raiders go down to number 12. Lions jump on number seven. And they grab their guy, Devon Witherspoon, best defensive back in this draft class. Atlanta Falcons, number eight. We're going to have DBs flying off the board like it's nothing right now. I get the Atlanta Falcons taking Christian Gonzalez, defensive back out of Oregon. Christian Gonzalez, obviously a great athlete, great year at Oregon. Did we need to do? Comes top 10 pick. They boost up that secondary. That's a great secondary dot because you have AJ Terrell, you have Christian Gonzalez. It's a great cornerback duo. I love this right here. Cornerback duo, they pair up right there. Atlanta Falcons take Christian Gonzalez, cornerback out of Oregon. That's great for right there. Dan Landing gets his first NFL draft pick as a head coach. Obviously, his first year at Oregon this year. So that coach, now he gets his first draft pick. Christian Gonzalez goes over to Atlanta Falcons. Pick number nine, Chicago Bears. Justin Fields took a lot of beating this year. There's no denying that. There are all these rumors. They're going to take a quarterback. They're going to get rid of Justin Fields. 
Obviously, none of that's going to happen now because they traded that one overall pick. Now I think, yeah, you got to do something right here. I think you're all in Justin Fields, so let's invest more in Justin Fields. Let's get him a great offensive lineman. What a better way to get an offensive lineman than his Ohio State buddy, Paris Johnson Jr. Paris Johnson Jr., maybe the best offensive lineman this year draft class, my highest on the board. Paris Johnson Jr. goes over to Chicago Bears at pick nine. Now, pick number 10, Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock. This will round out our top 10. There have been rumors swirling all week about the Philadelphia Eagles. Did they get Derrick Henry? Did they get another guy? Because they have high picks for being the second best team in the NFL last season, lost the Super Bowl. I think this is what you do right here. I think you trade that number 10 overall pick to the Tennessee Titans. You grab Derrick Henry and you grab maybe something else. I think you get that number 11 pick because Titans do have pick 11. Uh, so you get that right there. So you get that pick swap. 10 goes to 11. Eagles go to pick 11. Titans go to pick 10. Eagles give up. Another first round pick for next year, and they get Derrick Henry in return for that right there. So now you got the Tennessee Titans on the clock. Pick number 10, Tennessee Titans. I'm going bold right here. You just gave up Derrick Henry. That's your franchise running back. You have Ryan Tannehill. How many years does he have left? If you could think of one quarterback in this draft class who represents Ryan Tannehill, playing style, everything, I would say Will Levis. This is perfect right here. Malik Will showed nothing in his rookie season. He showed horrible, he showed bust potential. His rookie year. He couldn't even be the second stringer on his team. They started Josh Dobbs over him now last game of the year because they didn't trust Malik Willis enough. I think you're done with the Malik Willis experiment. I think Mike Vrabel's a little bit worried about his drop right now. He just gave up Derrick Henry. You have that number 10 pick. You got to go get your guy. Get Will Levis. I love this pick right here. Will Levis becomes Tennessee Titan. That's the next quarterback off the board. Let's see if we get another quarterback back off the board. But really, the big four quarterbacks are off the board right now. Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Andy Richardson. Now we got Will Levis. Coming off the board, that's pick 10 for right there. Titans trade up one pick with the Philadelphia Eagles, obviously giving up Derrick Henry in that process, but getting that number 10 pick and getting next year's first round pick from the Philadelphia Eagles. So, Titans trade up. They get their future franchise quarterback. Will Levis needs a year on the bench. There's no denying that. Will Levis needs a richer year or two. Compares to the Jordan Love situation. I like this right here, though. Will Levis can be a franchise quarterback. It's just going to depend. I don't know if he can be a Hall of Fame quarterback because he can't even beat out Sean Clifford at Penn State. That shows you something right there. If Will Levis was so good, why can't he beat out Sean Clifford, who really didn't accomplish much in his college football career? He couldn't accomplish much at Kentucky. Had a bowl game win. I wouldn't consider that success right there. Tennessee Titans trade up. They grab Will Levis. That's their franchise quarterback. Let's see how his career pans out. He's my number 10 pick. He's my quarterback follower of this draft. There's rumors he's going number one. There's rumors he's going number two. I deny all those. I have him going pick 10 to the Tennessee Titans. Now, pick 11. Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock from that previous trade, the 10-11 swap. With that 11th overall pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Joey Porter Jr., cornerback out of Penn State. Two top DBs are off the board. You have Christian Gonzalez and Devon Witherspoon off the board right now. So you resort a little bit. You think, who's an East Coast guy we can get? Oh, Joey Porter Jr. is still on the board. He's been in that NFL locker room before. His dad played in the NFL. I love this pick for you right there. You have an aging secondary, Darius Slay, all these guys. You still have a Super Bowl caliber team. You want to get a defense rookie of the year? You want to get the next Sauce Gardner? Joey Porter Jr. can be for that right there. Joey Porter Jr. goes over to the Philadelphia Eagles. That's pick 11. Penn State, this is perfect right here. What's College of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, obviously in Pennsylvania. This is a perfect pick right here. Joey Porter Jr., defensive back at Penn State, heading over to that. Philadelphia Eagles, brotherly love. Love that pick for right there. Philadelphia taking Jory Porter Jr. Now, pick number 12, Las Vegas Raiders are on that clock from the 7-12 trade where we had the Lions trading up from pick 12 to get that pick number 7. Now the Raiders pick, pick number 12. I think the Raiders all along need an edge rusher. It was too early to take one right there because the main ones are off the board, Tyree Wilson and Will Anderson. But now you have guys like Nolan Smith, Miles Murphy to pick from. I think you take Miles Murphy right here. Had a really up and down Call triple football career, Miles Murphy, but still a solid one. Las Vegas Raiders get their guy. That's a great edge duo for right there. You have Max Crosby on one end, and you're going to have Miles Murphy on the other end. So Miles Murphy, pick number 12, goes over to the Las Vegas Raiders. Pick number 13, Green Bay Packers are on the clock. Now, Green Bay Packers made that trade earlier in the week. Aaron Rodgers, they need a whole reset. They take a wide receiver. Would that be irony? If they took a wide receiver, they took an offensive threat the first draft without Aaron Rodgers in 20 years, when they didn't even take one once in his 20 years there. That would be ironic, wouldn't it? But we're not going to do that to Aaron Rodgers. It's not going to ruin his day. Let's take Lucas Van Ness, Iowa defense, and really fix that Packers kind of mantra, Packers type of locker room. They need to reset and get that great edge rusher. Maybe the next Clay Matthews could compare him to. Lucas Van Ness, great college football season. I'm going over to the Green Bay Packers at pick 13. 14, New England Patriots are on the clock. 
There's still a guy by the name of Pierce Garanti, who's six foot ten, is a great offensive lineman at Northwestern. This is an undeniable easy pick for me right here. Pierce Garanti goes over to the England Patriots at pick number 14. They get their East Coast guy. Bill Belichick always loves that. Like this right here. Pierce Garanti, offensive lineman, boosting up that O-line for Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi. Never know in New England. Pick number 15, their rivals, New York Jets, are on the clock. You have Aaron Rodgers now. There's still some questions with that offensive line. And let me say this right here. Mekhi Becton, everyone says, oh, it's a great story. He's back. He's healthy now. He's going to have a great season. I'm not so sold. I think the Jets right now, they had a great rookie class last year. You had Jermaine Johnson. You had Sauce Gardner. You had Garrett Wilson. Two of them, one rookie of the year. Don't swing for the fences in this draft. That's all I'm saying here. Don't swing for the fences. Don't go for a risky pick. Take an offensive lineman right here. Take Broderick Jones, offensive tackle at Georgia. This guy can be a Hall of Famer. He's a great offensive lineman, and that's a steal for you right there. I pick 15. He can be a starter day one. They boost him well at Georgia. National champion twice. No doubt about it. Broderick Jones goes over to the New York Jets. Now, pick number 16, Washington Commanders are on the clock. They don't take a quarterback. I'm pretty sold on Sam Howell right now. Do need safety. That's secondary, lacking a little bit. This is the first draft without Dan Snyder as the owner, looking like he's going to sell the team. I think they take Brian Branch, safety out of Alabama. Brian Branch has some great up and down plays in college at Alabama, but those can be fixed in the NFL, especially with the commanders. This team needs a total reset. This franchise needs a total reset, and that's coming. So Brian Branch, safety out of Alabama, goes over to the Washington Commanders. Now, pick number 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers are on the clock. This is going to be interesting right here. Who do they take? Kenny Piggy, they took last year. That was a bit of a shock to all of us. But this year, you know, a little bit further back in the draft, you still have some pieces, but you kind of finish that year on a good note instead of a bad note, getting your high draft pick, even though you didn't make the playoffs. I think you'd rather have a worse end of the season, get a really high draft pick, say, top 10, than have a good end of the season, not even make the playoffs. So maybe Mike Tomlin likes finishing the season well. He got his winning record. But I have. Number 17, Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Cam Smith, cornerback at South Carolina. You know, we got that tier one of defensive backs. So now, tier one, I would say, was Christian Gonzalez, Devon Witherspoon, Joey Porter. Now, in that tier two, Cam Smith, a few other great guys in there, DJ Turner. Let's see if he pops up in this mock draft. Number 17, Pittsburgh Steelers select Cam Smith, cornerback out of South Carolina. Number 18, Detroit Lions around the clock. They select former number one overall recruit. Coming out of high school, I clubs in defense alignment of Brian Brees. He really emphasizes that whole Dan Campbell type of philosophy. So this is a great draft for the Lions right here. They boost up the secondary, and they boost up that defensive line. That's a beast of a defense line for right there. You got Brian Brees at no tackle, and you got Aiden Hutchinson on that edge. That's fearful right there, without a doubt. Detroit Lions select Brian Brees, defense alignment out of Clemson. Number 19, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the clock. You might lose Devin White. I think it's good. you're going to lose Devin White because you're either going to have to trade him, something's going to happen with that whole situation. Hold that. So you're going to have to move on from Devin White. You're in that post-Tom Brady era. Don't go crazy. Don't go take B. John Robinson. Don't go take a quarterback like Tom Brady because if you take B. John Robinson, kind of forced into a win-now mode because you have to build around that superstar running back who hasn't popped up in this mock draft yet. But I think you go with the safe pick right here, kind of a versatile guy who can fill that Devin White void or you can play another position. Nolan Smith at Georgia, great past two seasons, got hurt last season, but still great season up until then. Nolan Smith ran one of the fastest 40 yard dashes ever by a defense player, especially defense alignment. Nolan Smith, edge at Georgia, ghost pick 19 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 20, Seattle Seahawks on the clock. This is an important pick right here. I already had them taking Jalen Carter, pick number five. Now you have pick number 20. I have you taking Hendon Hooker, quarterback at Tennessee. Hendon Hooker needs a year off because he just tore his ACL. Obviously not pro ready in my opinion yet, even though he's 25 years old. So you give me a year off. You play Geno Smith for one year. Let's see if he can live up to what he did last season. I don't know if he can. So you take Hendon Hooker, have him back up Geno Smith for a year. And then after that, that's Perfect right there. You have Hennie Hooker for years. Or you have Geno Smith for another season, and then you get to plug Hennie Hooker in there. We saw Hennie Hooker could do at Tennessee last year. That looked like number one pick potential. So, Hennie Hooker goes number 20 to the Seattle Seahawks. 21. We have another trade popping up. I have the Los Angeles Chargers trading pick number 21 to the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys trade up to pick number 21. Last time, the Cowboys took an exciting player in the first round. That was Ezekiel Elliott, in my opinion. Blaine Van Der Esch didn't really work out. Tyler Smith, he's an offensive lineman, not so exciting. Taco Charlton didn't work out. They need another exciting player to take. Who's that exciting player going to be? 
What better way to fill that Ezekiel Elliott hole than to take B. John Robinson? Tony Pollard, you can all love him. But wouldn't you like to see B. John Robinson have a thousand yard rookie season? Would you like to see him have a 10 year career with the Cowboys? Kind of like Ezekiel Elliott did, but maybe B. John Robinson could stay out of trouble a little bit better and be a little bit better of a running back than Ezekiel Elliott was. B. John Robinson's going to make the Pro Bowl year one. Let me just tell you right there. He's going to win offense rookie year. This is a guy who will win offense rookie year. These quarterbacks, they're going to get in thrown tough situations. They're not going to win rookie year. B. John Robinson will win rookie of the year, in my opinion. He's going to have a thousand yard rushing season. I love this right here. Texas. It just per- works out perfectly. Dallas Cowboys trade up to get their guy at running back, Bijan Robinson, and that creates a Super Bowl caliber team for you once again because you have Dak Prescott, Bijan Robinson, and then Tony Pollard coming off injury. I love this right here. Dallas Cowboys select Bijan Robinson. Now, pick number 22, Baltimore Ravens. There's so much drama surrounding the Ravens right now. Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham Jr. A lot of people think that they might go after a quarterback, say, a Will Levis or an Anthony Richardson. You could see that on draft night. Maybe they grabbed that number pick three in the Arizona Cardinals. But with pick 2022, in this 2023 NFL Squared Sports mock draft, haven't seen wide receiver yet. I think you see the best wide receiver in this year's draft class go off the board. Quentin Johnson at TCU. Go get her. Can grab any ball. Goes right here to the Baltimore Ravens at pick number 22. I was thinking about Jackson Smith and Jigba, but he's really only I mean, limited to one spot in the field, and that's the slot receiver. Quinn Johnson, you can plug him in at tight end if you want later in his career. Compared to Kelvin Benjamin, but a little bit better in my opinion. Quinn Johnson, great college football career, especially last season. He can put the burners on if he needs to. Quinn Johnson, number 22, Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson gets another toy to play with. Hopefully, he can re-sign with the Baltimore Ravens at some point in this offseason. 23, Minnesota Vikings. You got Kirk Cousins. A lot of people say, hey, get rid of Kirk Cousins, dump him, go after another quarterback. I say, screw that plan. Let's wait till next year. What if you can have next year, have a bad season this year, and get Caleb Williams next year, and then you can have a Caleb Williams, Justin Jefferson duo. That's Super Bowl year one. It seems like a Super Bowl caliber team. Year one, Caleb Williams is going to be great his rookie season, in my opinion. So you wait until next year to go after that quarterback. Let's not address that just yet. Let's go after wide receiver right now. Let's go back-to-back wide receiver picks like Jackson Smith and Jigba. Iowa Ohio State going number 23, Minnesota Vikings. If he doesn't get injured this season, he's a surefire top 10 pick. I like Minnesota Vikings taking Jackson Smith and Jake Ball. Wide receiver, Iowa Ohio State. Number 24, Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock. Every great quarterback in their career had a tight end. Patrick Mahomes has Travis Kelsey. Tom Brady had Ron Minkowski. Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, he had his wide receivers throughout his career. He had Jimmy Graham, a few other guys. So, who do the Jacksonville Jaguars need? I think they need another tight end. Trevor Lawrence, if you want to have a successful career, get him. Tighten his quarterback's best friend. It's not even close. Michael Meyer, I know Dame. That's a perfect connection for years to come. Save the next 15 years, you can have Trevor Lawrence to Michael Mayer, who can be the best tight end in the NFL at some point in his career. This is a steal right here. I love this right here. Get him a new best friend. Get him a tight end to play with. Michael Meyer goes over to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence. Michael Meyer, Travis Etienne, that's a great trio if you're right there. Travis Etienne running back, Trevor Lawrence at quarterback, and then yeah, Michael Meyer at tight end. You know, wide receiver could be addressed right here, which is definitely interesting, but you see Quentin Johnson, Jack Smith, and Jigba already off the board. I think you just stick to your ground, roll with Christian Kirk, roll with Zay Flyers, roll what you already have, get Michael Meyer, first style threat at tight end. Pick number 25, my New York football giants are on the clock. Who do they take? Deion Jones, great season. Saquon Barkley, ooh, that could be interesting. You take B. John Robinson if he's available right here. I don't have him available. But with this pick, New York Giants take Zay Flowers. I mean, Giants really need all season long was a versatile threat at wide receiver. They didn't have that. You can't say Isaiah Hodgins. You can't say Darius Slayton. Definitely not Kane Galladay. So I think Zay Flowers right here, perfect for you right now. Zay Flowers, great year at Boston College. Very versatile. I think Patrick Mahomes looking for Zay Flowers. Obviously, he had that workout with him. Giants don't let the opportunity happen. Giants snag Zay Flowers right here at Pick number 25, wide receiver at Boston College, keeping that East Coast connection going. Pick number 26, Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock from that trade with Dallas Cowboys. They take Kalaja Kansi, defensive lineman out of Pittsburgh. Last defensive lineman, first round pick to come out of Pittsburgh, was Aaron Dalt. You want the next Aaron Dalt? I don't know if he's going to be that. I know he can be a great player, though. Kalaja Kansi ran a great 40 yard dash, fastest 40 yard dash time ever by a defensive lineman. So, Los Angeles Chargers take Kalaja Kansi, defense tackle out of pit. Love this pick for you right there. Los Angeles Chargers last year took Zion Johnson. That worked out pretty well. Let's get another good pick right here. I like to address wide receiver for a non crazy wide receiver team, unlike the Ravens, unlike the Vikings, maybe in the second round. That's kind of what the Packers did last year with Christian Watson. Maybe approach that plan this year. Los Angeles Chargers, they take Kalaja Kansi out of Pittsburgh. 
pick number 27, Buffalo Bills. Now, this team doesn't really have that defensive superstar. You could say Von Miller, but he got hurt last season, so let's see how that goes this year. I don't have them taking a defensive player, though. You wait one more year, in my opinion, or you wait one more round. You've seen some great players come in later round. Say, Fred Warner, even Von Miller came in later round. So, right here, Buffalo Bills, at pick number 27, they take John Michael Schmitz, center, out of Minnesota. You need a center? This is a steal for right there. Interior offensive lineman, years to come. Could be Josh Allen's new best friend. That's how Stefan Diggs. So, interior offensive lineman, Minnesota. Center, John Michael Schmitz, goes over to the Buffalo Bills. Great pick for right there. Buffalo Bills get their new center. Pick number 28, Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. Now, they need an offensive lineman. Because this team doesn't have many holes, but you do need an offensive lineman because Joe Burrow still did take a lot of hits. Joe Mason still take a lot of hits, even if he's on the team next year. A perfect pick for you right here, you might think, is Dewan Jones off of Tackle Ohio State. I don't have Dewan Jones in this mock draft. Dewan Jones, that's not me being a biased Michigan fan. I just don't like Dewan Jones' game. He's big, which is obviously a big factor right for you right there, but he's only big in the run game. You can see him get absolutely pancaked by Aiden Hutchinson in that 2021 game. You can see him get mauled by that Georgia defensive line in that playoff game. So right now, I got Cincinnati Bengals taking Darnell Wright offense tackle out of Tennessee. This guy can be a superstar for you. I love it right here. Darnell Wright goes over to the Cincinnati Bengals at pick number 28, get an offensive lineman that isn't Dewan Jones. Darnell Wright goes over to Cincinnati Bengals, pick number 28. Now, pick number 29, we haven't really seen any big reaches yet. You know, last year you have Cole Strange going over to the New England Patriots. Year before that, you have Peyton Scherner late round going over to the New Orleans Saints. I think the Saints take another reach right here, but it could be a good one. You take BJ Ojolari, brother of Aziz Ojolari, out of LSU. You get that LSU New Orleans Saints connection. BJ Ojolari can be a pro bowler later on in his career. I like this pick for right there. Might be a reach, but in the second round, you don't know if you're going to get him. So I like this pick right here. BJ Ojolari becomes first round pick. Really the first guy that a lot of people might not have a first round grade on. I have a first round grade on. BJ Ojolari goes over to the New Orleans Saints. Pick number 30. Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock. They take my Michigan man, Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith's not going to get a lot of sacks too. What he is going to get, a lot of tackles for loss. He's going to wear down your center, wear down your whole entire offensive line throughout the game. The little stuff. You can't really play him year one. At least not starter year one, but you have Fletcher Cox to help with that. That's a great defense tackle right there. Entering that post-Fletcher Cox era, entering that post-Jason Kelsey era like they did last year with Cam Jorgens. They approach that same thing this year. They take Mozzie Smith, defensive lineman at Michigan. Love this pick right here. Philadelphia Eagles take my Michigan man. Mozzie Smith, fierceful on that defense line. And with the last pick in this mock draft, the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl champion select, Christopher Smith the second safety out of Georgia. That's my mock draft. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. That's about for the Squared Sports third annual mock draft special. Great NFL draft. Let me leave your comments on the picks you agreed on. Leave your comments on the picks you disagreed on. That's about for the mock draft. Now, best last question today. This week's question today is, who will be the best player in Mr. Draft class? I'm going to say Will Anderson Jr. Who are you saying? You can go with the shocker, maybe a Jack Smith and Jigba, and an hooker, or you can go with the solid pick, like a Will Levis or a Bryce Young. Leave your thoughts on that in the comments section. Who will be the best pick from this year's NFL Draft class? Leave your thoughts on that in the comments section. That's five question day this week. That's five for Squirt Sports, Land Frank, episode 121, the mock draft special. Thank you for tuning in. Watch the NFL Draft tonight, obviously, whatever channel you watch the NFL Draft on. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review for the best sports content in the game. We'll be back here next week, episode 122. Stay tuned.